Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson we would do a very cool effect that you sort of see done all the time these days. But a little while back, it was referred to as the Schindler's List effect or the Pleasantville effect. And that is where you'll have one object in your frame that's in color and everything else is in black and white. Now, there's a few ways to achieve this look, and I'm going to do it using a fantastic effect. And this is going to sort of be the first of many tutorials that I'm going to do on this effect. And the effect I'm talking about is Animat. It's a fantastic effect inside of both Media Composer and Symphony. It's an excellent roto tool that once you see how well it works, I guarantee you're going to be using it all the time. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command and Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is to open our sequences bin, and I'm just going to drag this down and out of the way here. And we obviously need a clip to work with. So what I decided to do is I decided to use a clip from Digital Juice's Video Tracks HD. This shot here, very nice shot, and of course you can probably guess what we're going to isolate, and that is this yellow hat right here. Now you can see that we got a bit of something going on here where we have this beam that's passing in front of it. Now remember, everything in here is going to be in black and white. The only thing that's going to be in color is the hat, and this beam that's going to pass in front is also going to be in black and white. So we're going to need to take that into account as well. Okay, so let's get in and let's start building this effect. The first thing I'm going to do is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select this entire clip. I'm going to hit B again on both Mac and Windows to overwrite this clip into a new sequence inside of, of course, the sequence has been. And this is going to be our background layer. So the first thing I'm going to do to create our black and white look is to simply hit Control and 8 on the Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac, and I'm going to come all the way down here to my image category, and I'm going to simply select the color effect. We're going to take color effect, I'm going to drag it and drop it right onto the shot here. And what we're going to do is step into effects mode. Now my shortcut for effects mode, I know you all know it, so you can all sing along, is Shift and Y. If you don't have Shift and Y mapped as effects mode on your keyboard, no problem. You can always find effects mode right here, or you can find it right over here as well. So Shift and Y is my shortcut, and it's going to call up the effects editor here. We're just going to stretch down a little bit. And the only thing I want to do is to remove the saturation. Now you might think that would be located sort of right up at the top, but no, it's actually located right down here under Chroma Adjust, right here, saturation. You can see, take it all out right there. Very cool. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to edit another instance of this clip into the layer above it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new layer. Again, T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the entire length of time here. And again, we're going to hit B on the keyboard to edit this clip in. Now, what we need to do, you'll see that the way the helmet goes is that it pretty much keeps sort of the same position. I mean, it's roughly moving back and forth, but as far as the perspective goes, it pretty much stays the same for a long time. We pass that wood, and then he starts to tilt his head up right about here. So what we're going to do at this point right here is I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette again. And what we need to do is we need to come down, believe it or not, to the key section because this effect is called Animat. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a matte channel. So what we're going to do is with our key category selected, you'll see Animat's located right at the top. I'm simply going to take Animat, I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here onto my shot. I'm going to hit Shift and Y again to step into effects mode, and what I need to do is I need to zoom in a little bit here to sort of get a view of what's going on with this hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, which is going to call up my magnifying glass. You're going to notice I don't have the magnifying glass located right here. You'll see that I do have it over here mapped onto my composer window, so we can use that as well. Now once we zoom in, if we need to repo the window here, or reposition the window, all we have to do is simply hit Control and Alt on Windows, Command and Option on the Mac to get our little pan tool here. I'm just going to slide this over like such, because I just need to see what's going on with the hat. Now what we're going to do is we need to get in, and I'm going to actually draw an outline, because there's a few ways that we can actually get in and work with Animat. Once we have the effect selected, a couple things I can do here. I can navigate over to the Rectangular Shape tool and draw a rectangle, like such. Not quite what we want, I'll just undo that. I can draw a circle. Again, not quite what we want, but still very cool. What I'm going to do is just undo that here. Again, what I can do is I can come in and I can choose the Poly tool, obviously drawing a series of straight lines. Just kind of like such. And I'm just going to bring it all the way back over here and just sort of connect it back to the beginning. There we go. Now you'll see if I 
step out of effects mode here. That's probably going to do the trick. What I'm going to do is just step back into effects mode here for one second because I'm just going to delete this. I want to show you the last tool, or second last tool, which is the curve tool, meaning I can actually just draw a mat around the hat just like such. And last but certainly not least, I'll just undo that. I also have a paint option where I can come in and actually just kind of do this. And just paint it in like such. Now, of course, when I come back to the selection tool and select it, you can see there's the sort of outline I drew. Now, of course, this begs the question, how do I get in and know exactly what is going on with the points on this mat or this mask here? Well, it's actually very easy. You're going to see right here, just below the rotation tool or the Z rotation right there, I actually have the reshape tool. And as soon as I select it, you're now going to see, see as you can see, this is the paintbrush that I drew. You can see all the points. Now, paintbrush, not exactly what I would have used in this situation. So let's just do this. Let's just delete it. Believe it or not, I'm actually not going to use the freehand tool because in some cases, the freehand tool, which is right here, or the curve tool creates too many points, too many points that I don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the poly tool because a lot of these are pretty straight. And I'm just going to draw sort of a rough shape around here. We can always add more points as we go. Just kind of like that, okay? Now, what I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to add a bit of a feather, and the feather is actually located right here. I'm just going to give it a feather value of about four, I think. Not too much. I'm just going to step back out of effects mode here. And you can see that this is looking pretty good. Now, the only catch here, and you'll see that right now I have both my start and my end keyframes selected, but no keyframe has been made here. So what I need to make sure that I do is to add a keyframe right there. Now, the reason that what I did was important before with having the start and the end keyframe selected is that I want to make sure that this value of four, as far as the feather goes, is at the beginning and it's at the end. So it's there the entire time. Because if it's not, you're going to end up having to go in and add that in every time you add a keyframe in, which can be quite annoying. Now, what we're going to do at this point is I'm just going to start coming back and you'll see that the helmet pretty much stays the same position. So right about here, we're going to add a keyframe. And all I'm going to do is simply just grab the mat and just bring it over like such. Now, you'll see it's a little bit off right there, which is something that's actually kind of easy to adjust here. You'll see we just step into our uh, we step into our reshape tool right here, and I just reshape it a little bit, and you'll see that's looking pretty good. Now, we're going to step back past that here. Again, we're just going to come back to the selection tool, just repo everything. Now, you see the top of the helmet pretty much stays the same. We just end up having to adjust the bottom a little bit here. But overall, it's nothing that's too complicated. And you'll see he does a little bit of a head move right there. So let's just adjust for that. Very cool. See, it's a little bit off right there, but as we grab and move, keyframes are being added, which is great. Just makes our life so much easier. And you see, it's almost like it's locked on right there. Now, don't worry about this. We're going to take care of this in just a second because that's obviously a bit of an issue. So let's just move this over here. You see, his head does a big sweep right there. So again, I'm just going to bring this over. I'm just going to line this up actually with the top here. And we're just going to adjust our points quick here. But you see, again, nothing that's overly complicated to do. Really, this is actually something that most people would say, you know what, Kev, you should have done this in After Effects. And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I don't need to leave my NLE to do cool stuff like this. You see, in most cases, the top of the helmet shape stays the same. I just end up doing a little bit of roto adjustment here to the actual helmet. And whether I do it in After Effects or do it in Media Composer or Symphony, it ends up being pretty much the exact same thing. Now you see the helmet pretty much stays the same shape right about there. That's pretty good. I could get in and adjust that, you know, a little bit of finite adjustment there if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay. Now here we obviously want to just take this keyframe. I'm going to copy it. We're going to paste it there so it's pretty darn close, and then just slide it over. So you see, we're doing pretty good there. It's off a little bit, so we'll just slide it over. And let's just check it out here. Pretty good all the way through there. Now, at some point here, right there, he starts to lift his head up to there, where the helmet pretty much then stays the same for the rest of the animation. Obviously, it moves a bit, but the shape more or less stays the same. So this is really the only major, sort of major adjustment that I end up having to do 
to the shape, but even the major adjustment is something that's very quick to do, as you see. Just grab the points, repull them exactly where we need them to be. Just make sure we keep our point selection tool here. Very cool. Now we also want to make sure that this one comes out like that because we still want the underside of the helmet. And that's looking good. And let's see what it does here. Take a look at that. It's off a little bit here, but with the feather, it still stays pretty good. Right there even a little bit. We'll just bring this back, bring this up, and take a look at that. This is looking very, very nice. Okay, so at this point here, the helmet still moves. And what we need to do is we need to just move the hand tool over here so we can see exactly what we're doing. But you see this long roto shot is not as complex as you might think it is. One thing that editors always hate doing is roto. Roto and chroma keying, I think. I mean, for me, those are sort of the two craziest things. We're going to get into tracking in later tutorials, but... Roto and Keen is kind of the big thing. And we're just going to copy this, much like we did at the beginning. Copy this and paste, this, paste that in there, a keyframe value, because, like I said, the shape doesn't change much. Very cool. So now I'm just going to step out here and take a look at what we have now. You're going to see now that I have the helmet move along. It stays pretty darn close. Now, obviously, you could be as detailed with your Roto as you want to be, but that's looking pretty good. But like I said, we got this bit of an issue here where what happens is, is that when the wood passes by, you'll see that if I step back into effects mode, we're going to zoom in. I'm just going to switch over back to the hand tool. You can see that we can actually see the brown of the wood. It's kind of hard to see there. But if I step in, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. Take a look at that. So what we're actually seeing if I step out is that's the brown of the wood with the yellow of the helmet. So I actually need to cover this up because it looks like a mistake if I don't. Most people might actually overlook this and not fix it, but it is something that is important to fix. So what I'm going to do is hit Control and Y on the keyboard, Command and Y for all my Mac friends out there. And again, we're just going to take the exact same layer. I'm going to copy this layer. Actually, we already have it up here in the preview window. So I can just hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, edit it in here. Now, what's important to keep in mind is I don't need this entire shot. I only need where that piece of wood passes in front of that helmet, which starts right here and goes to right there. That's the only thing I need to concern myself with. And again, we're going to use Animat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, take this color effect here from the bottom, and we're going to take it, and we're going to drag it and drop it right onto the topmost layer here. Then what we're going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to go right back to our Animat. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and Windows Option on the Mac to drop this onto this shot. And I think I just need to zoom back here just to make sure that I see everything. There we go. And what I'm going to do is, with Animat selected here, I'm simply going to come into the Rectangle tool. And we're just going to draw a rectangle, just kind of like such. There we go, perfect. And you can see what we've actually done here now, is if you see, if I step to the layer below, there is our hat that you can see that's actually our hat mat that's showing us the brown of the wood. But as soon as I take that color effect, make this top layer black and white, and then add a rectangular mask onto it, we're basically covering it over. Now, what's also important to keep in mind here, again, I have the first and last keyframe selected. I want to put a little bit of a feather on that of about four. Now, I'm going to add a keyframe right there. And all we're going to do is just back up a little bit. I'm going to take this. We're just going to slide it over like such. Very cool. A little bit more. Actually, what we should do is just copy this and paste it, just like that. You'll see now that that comes in, covers it up. Now, we'd have to zoom in a bit to make sure that we're getting all of that. And then once we come over here like that, we're just going to take this again like such. Maybe even a little bit more. There we go. And of course, last but certainly not least, we want this last keyframe here. So let's see what we got going on here now. It's very good. What I also want to do here is I just want to zoom in just to see exactly what's going on here. It's pretty close. I think what we need to do is right about in here, we just need to extend this out just a little bit, just to cover this over, because I don't want to see any brown on our fence here. But guess what I now have? I now have, if I come back and I simply hit play, we now have the Schindler's List effect, just showing the yellow of his hat, done using a fantastic roto tool 
that's available included inside of Media Composer and Symphony. Like I said, we've got so many more tutorials coming with Animat. I just wanted to scratch the surface and show you this fantastic tool. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.